Uh, let, let's talk about some college football. Let's let's get back into a little football talk. I don't want us to go all day. The Big Ten. The Big Ten was set to release a schedule today. And then they did not. Because Rutgers went and had 28 positive COVID tests. And they're trying to figure out exactly what in the world is going on uh, over in Piscataway. Right? So... There is that whole situation going on. They are delaying the schedule release. Now, this was not a widely known thing um, about the schedule release, but the the other side, the Chicago Tribune, has got a story up that is incredibly interesting about uh, Kevin Warren, the Big Ten Commissioner. And the headline is, Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren, as he ponders canceling the 2020 football season, is getting input from conference athletes via video calls. Now, I found this incredibly interesting. With all the stuff that's going on in the Pac-12 and all that kind of stuff, it, it seems like there's an incredibly big divide between conference administrators and the actual student-athletes that are playing the games. It has been for years. That's just always the way that it has been. Kevin Warren has come in and completely changed the way that things are going. Right? I told you when this guy became a commissioner, he's instantly going to be the best in the country. Yeah, no, we, we've talked about this for months now. And yeah. he is... I mean, this is he, what leadership looks like. Yeah, he's firing it up. I mean, this is awesome. Uh, sources say Commissioner Kevin Warren has attempted to meet with two student-athletes from each Big Ten school by video conference, one football player, one from a different sport. He completed some calls Monday and others on Tuesday. Uh, he clearly wants to take the pulse of players before deciding whether to move forward or to pull the plug on the 2020 season. That also explains why the Big Ten, which initially planned to release its football schedule Tuesday, will wait at least another day before making an announcement. And that's not all. Sources say that after Warren learned Monday of the COVID-19 outbreak at Rutgers, uh, let's see, multiple team staffers, 28 football players, etc., he reconsidered the conference's next step. These developments are among those adding to the exponentially growing concern regarding a 2020 season. The St. Louis Cardinals suffering a COVID-19 outbreak and then a sixth Big Ten program paused workouts with Northwestern joining Ohio State, Maryland, Michigan State, Indiana, and Rutgers. Now, Northwestern's was caused by a single COVID-19 test, but contact tracing prompted a quarantine of more than two dozen players. They are hoping to resume workouts on Wednesday. Now, all of this stuff is going on. You know, the, the mother of an Indiana football player got the Big Ten's attention Monday. Um, Darren Rovell is awful. Blah. Damien told us that the stream is lagging. However, we haven't dropped any new frames, so as long as you can hear us, we should be good. But either way, um, the the Indiana Darren Ravel do that was awful. So he this the football player that's in question is a a freshman at Indiana, and he posted on Facebook or Twitter one or the other about how he was not going to live his life in fear. Right, that's all he tweeted. But Ravel called him out basically making fun of him because now he has COVID-19 and he's having some some difficulties with it. Okay. And, yeah, it, it was it was a pretty nasty way to go at somebody. I mean, it, to go shitty. at a kid is, is pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty shitty. Yeah, I agree. So, either way, um, let's see. The, the post, Debbie Rucker cautioned that her son, Brady Feeney, a freshman offensive lineman, ended up in the emergency room with breathing issues after being infected with the coronavirus. She said, after 14 days of hell battling the horrible virus, now we're dealing with a possible heart issue, she wrote. Bottom line, even if your son's school does everything right to protect them, they cannot protect them. Now, all of this stuff going on with Rashad Bateman opting out for Minnesota, obviously he's going to be a first or second round uh, round wide receiver uh, for P.J. Flex team. All of this stuff going on has caused the Big Ten commissioner to say, eh, hold up, like let's, let's just wait and see. Which, all of this stuff happening in the Big Ten might be why all these other conferences are saying, eh, let's wait. Let's, let's hold up. Let's, let's push back. It's, it's so funny. You get one leader in the room, and, and the lack of leadership begins to just shine like a zit on a gorgeous face. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got that right. You've got that right. Um, the issue here, for those that were questioning before, Matt Miller said, no Big Ten sign, uh, no Big Ten sign me up. No 7-3 games. Um, and then Joseph said, yes, sound is okay. Frame is behind. You're good. Well, there you go. Sometimes that's how that works. Um, <laughs> thanks, Internet. We appreciate it, Comcast. So here's the deal. The Big Ten schools 
stand to lose 50 to $60 million a piece in revenue if there is not a college football season. Some of the smaller schools, App State, you know, what? so Sunbelt, Mountain West, whatever, you're talking a few million dollars a piece, and for the Sunbelt and the MAC and whoever else, you're talking 900000 500000 whatever a piece for a football season. Now, everybody's budget is set up differently. But if you're the Big Ten and you lose 50 to $60 million in a season, you are going to have to cut staff like crazy. I mean, it is a ridiculous number of people that are going to It'll be fired. It'll affect the school. It yes. will affect the school across, not sports. It will affect the school across the board. Yes, and it, and it will affect sports. Like it, but it, it won't well, just yes, affect. But sports. it won't just be right sport. It, it it will be the entire university system will will have a major downfall because of that. Now it's not like you know if everything comes back the next year, obviously you'll get that money back and whatnot. But taking an entire year without this one cash cow. Uh, I mean, how many of you could afford to pay bills and pay staff and whatever if your business was shut down for an entire season, like an yep. entire year? And then you just can't turn it back on. That's not how businesses work. Right. So you you have to find a way. Like, you, you can obviously come back and play a college football season the next year, but you won't have nearly as many staffers. You won't have the same assistant coaches. You won't have the same uh, – there you won't can, be a lot of sports. You can get new people, but bringing back old people won't be as easy as it gets. And now you're bringing in untrained new people. Yes, and it will be an entirely different set of circumstances yeah. the next go-round. So It's just not what you want. No, it's definitely not. So I, I, don't, uh, I don't envy Kevin Warren at all for what he has to try and figure out with all of this. Obviously, six teams out of 14 that are currently pausing their, their workouts, that's not a good thing. But... It is early enough in the process. Remember, the Big Ten was was the ones that were wanting to start on September the 12th. They yep. wanted to have the flexibility. Well, if you can't get these guys into camp, you can't start on September 12th. So, you know, obviously because they're doing conference only, there is the flexibility. They can start whenever the hell they want to. But it it's almost assured if they don't start by, like, September 26th, they're not going to get 10 games in, which is going to end up hurting their inventory, which is going to end up hurting their TV revenue, et cetera, Right. You can probably stand to lose, you know, maybe even half of the money that would come in for a regular TV contract. But you, I don't know that they can they can survive the full TV revenue contract being gone. So we'll yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. 